Today, I'd like to read you something from one of the minor prophets, Haggai. Haggai chapter 2, verse 8, and talk to you about silver and gold. Here we go. Haggai chapter 2, verse 8. This is what the Lord says. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. Now, it's an old joke or story that too many people have experienced in real life. A building contractor comes to remodel your home. He rips everything apart, and then you don't see him again for six months. Now, it's not easy to live with a half-finished or barely begun building project. The unfinished work has a way of laughing at you every day, and discouragement always hangs heavy in the air. It's even worse when your building project is crippled by a lack of resources. It's generally understood that you can't build without money. And if you don't have the money, it's pretty discouraging. That's what Zerubbabel and the other leaders of Jerusalem were up against with the ultimate building project. This ultimate building project was building a second temple in the days after the people of God were allowed to return from their exile in Babylon. After the first wave of returning exiles came to Jerusalem, it took them two years to start rebuilding the temple. They began to work in earnest, and over the next two years, they built a new altar and set the foundation stone for the temple. Then the work stopped for 14 years. Over that time, they simply found other things to spend their time and money on. And when a prophet like Haggai came to encourage them to get busy with God's work again, they found it easy to claim that the work couldn't be done because they couldn't give it the resources. That's when God reminded them through Haggai that he had all the resources they needed, that all the silver and all the gold in creation belonged to him. Therefore, they didn't need to fear that giving to the Lord would leave them impoverished. They had to boldly trust the God who owned every resource and then give generously. You see, the problem was not a lack of money. It was really a lack of trust. Sometimes our belief in God's provision will actually twist itself into a reason not to give. Well, I won't give, and it really doesn't matter because God will provide their need. Haggai shows us that this is the wrong kind of thinking. When we really trust God and his ability to provide, we will give generously. Hudson Taylor was the groundbreaking missionary to the interior regions of China in the second half of the 19th century. He experienced this principle early in his life. As a young man, he preached in the boarding houses in the poor slums of London. A poor man asked Taylor to come back to his room and to pray for his wife, who suffered from complications from childbirth and was near death. Now, this man had no money at all and couldn't afford to pay a priest to come and perform last rites. So Taylor went to the man's room and found the heartbreaking situation. Several children, the afflicted mother, and a three-day-old baby living in absolute filth and squalor with no money or food whatsoever. Taylor knew that he had, I'll call it the equivalent of a $20 gold coin in his pocket that would meet their needs, but it was all the money that he had in the world himself. Now, he began to speak to the family about God when the Lord spoke to his own heart. This is what God said to him, you hypocrite, telling these unconverted people about a kind and loving father in heaven and not prepared to trust him without your $20. Now, Taylor wished that he had two $10 pieces, and he gladly would have given them one of them, but all he had was one $20 coin. He was taken aback, but decided to lead the family in the Lord's Prayer. And as soon as he said the words, Our Father, the Lord convicted him of his hypocrisy again. How could he pray as if he really trusted God as a loving Father if he didn't believe that God could provide if he gave the entire $20 coin. He struggled through the prayer despite the tremendous conviction, and then he gave the father of that needy family that single $20 gold piece. That provision saved the life of the mother and rescued the family. 
And friend, the lesson from that is plain. Knowing that God provides should make us more generous instead of being less generous. We should never let our knowledge of God's provision make us say, I don't have to give to their need because God will provide for them some other way. Rather, as directed by the Lord, we should say this, God will provide for my needs so I can give generously. Our loving Father, who has all the silver and gold in the world, is worthy of that kind of trust. So let's trust Him like that and trust Him today.